Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the second episode of the Careers Cast uh, podcast series, focusing on careers, looking at longer term plans for your um, future. And hopefully, you found the first episode um, interesting. And this is part of the series that um, is launching our virtual progression week this week. So, um, really excited that we've got special guest this week, someone who is dear to my heart, my one and only sister. Um, Dr. Alex Harborn. So welcome, Dr. Harborn. Thank you. Hello. Hi, it's great to have you um, with us. Just last week, we were looking at an uh, introduction to the series and looking at how the world of work has changed over 100 years. Then um, Neve, who you know well, um, was looking at finance and working with SpongeBob. But it's fantastic to have you with us because you're going to be giving us an insight into the world of medicine and medical practice. I am, and I'm really looking forward to telling you about my experiences. Wonderful. So let's uh, let's get cracking, shall we? The first thing is really, um, what is your current role? So I am a, um, a doctor, a GP, but I'm an out of hours GP at uh, a large East London hospital, so Homerton Hospital. So I work there as part of the emergency department, which is A&E, um, and I see acutely unwell patients when their usual GP service is closed. Um, so to give an example, if if we if you lived in City in Hackney and uh, it was the middle of the night and you had you suddenly had a fever and you felt very unwell or short of breath, you would call up one one one, and and they would then book you an appointment with me at the Homerton Hospital, um, a face to face appointment. So that's how it works. So um, I've been doing that for six or seven years. Wow, and you've also last, sorry, yes, you've also yeah. Um, yeah, you've also got involved in some of the teaching side of things as well. That's right. Yeah, I have. So I've become, uh, I've been doing it for sort of six or seven years. So the last one or two years, I've also become involved with the, the medical school that I actually went to myself, Barts in London. So I've um, become a GP tutor and I teach medical students, which has been great. So I've been teaching them the full curriculum throughout the year um, and I see them every week. So I've been teaching year two medical students for Barts and I've also become a supervisor. So I'm helping to train um, doctors. They're doctors, but they want to become GPs. They need a bit of super supervision in the hospital. So I, I train them as well. Um, and with COVID the last few weeks, a uh, few weeks and months, everyone knows we've been told to call 111 when we have COVID symptoms. So my job has, has become a bit of a COVID doctor. So I'm seeing all those all those face-to-face -face COVID patients. <laughs> um, and uh, and I've taken on a few new roles in the last few weeks to, to help with the fight against COVID. So I've, um, I've started working at a COVID-19 treatment centre in Hackney um, so that we can keep keep these patients away from the normal GP practices. Oh, that's got a really glamorous title, hasn't it? Yeah, we call it a hot hub. And my kids keep saying, that... are you go to the hot tub, mum? <laughs> I'm like, no, no, not the hot tub, the hot hub. Oh, it's the COVID hot patients. tub, right. So but, it's not um, like a yeah. spa, it's not for the spa for so the virus. Yeah, yeah, these things have popped up all over the place. So I'm, I'm working there and I'm also, I've just, I'm trying to help out with um, the London Ambulance Service. I'm just starting a, a role in that service, helping with the central triage for all of North London, um, triaging one-on-one -on -one calls for them because they are, they're so overwhelmed, obviously, because of the demand now. So they need more doctors to help. So I'm helping with them as well. So ever evolving. But my key role is that out of hours GP role at Thomaston Hospital, really. Yeah, but we're obviously so fortunate and grateful for all that you and your colleagues do continue to do. Um, have you have you felt about the clap? It's still going strong every week. It seems to get Thursday, eight o'clock gets more and more vociferous. Um, have yeah, you, have you, have you been involved? the first you... the first week. Um, that week was was when it was really bad wasn't it and i just worked three nights three evenings and i was doing the homeschooling during the day um and i was so tired um and i'd forgotten that the clap was taking place and i just sat down on my sofa <laughs> and i heard the clap and i have to say i uh, my eyes filled up with tears wow. i i was very emotional my husband james is very emotional as well um so it was really encouraging i have to say it's, it's been such an encouragement to all the staff at my hospital to, to have that clap every week oh, it's really it's really brought people together i mean i'm i'm getting to know neighbors i'd never even noticed before and uh yeah, it is. Uh, it's something that people just showing their gratitude for everything that you do. So just to go back, really, to the to the, your younger years, because um, obviously you're quite you're quite a way down into your career. Um, did you always want to be a doctor? Um, I didn't. No, it's. I actually, I think I wanted to be an actress. 
if I remember rightly. I think the school I chose to go to, secondary school, I've been told that loads of famous actors have gone there, and I, I thought that sounded quite good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I thought it seemed like a good life. So I, I, I sort of wanted to be an actress when I was around 11. And to be honest, it's a bit strange because I didn't really enjoy science at school. I, th- mm. I thought science was quite boring. I was more into maths and English. And um, and I think, I don't know if you're, you remember, but I uh, I had a bonfire and we had a bonfire in the garden. I finished the GCSEs and I put all my science exercise books oh, on yeah. top of the bonfire. Don't, don't try this and at I home, burnt... kids. Don't try this at home. <laughs> yeah, no, don't try it at home. But I burnt them <laughs> as a symbol of, of this past life, life of, you know, gone. No more science for me. I was so happy. I was doing all the subjects I loved for A-level. Yeah. And then six months later, I was like, actually, I want to be a doctor. So I'm going to have to change those A-levels and do science. <laughs> was, there someone, so, yeah. was there someone in particular who inspired you or influenced you to, to look at medicine? There, wa- there was. So we didn't have anyone in our family who was a doctor. And I hadn't really had much experience of it. But we did have a... Um, our dad had a, fa- a friend called Mervyn, who used to come for Sunday lunch sometimes, and he was a GP. Mm. Um, And, uh, yeah, it was just one day. I'd I'd never thought about being a doctor. And one day he came for Sunday lunch, and when he left, Dad said to me, oh, Mervyn said that he's been, he watched the way you were talking at the table, and he just thought that you'd make a really good doctor. Um, And it really shocked me. I thought, a doctor? Why on earth would I be a good doctor? (laughs) (laughs) But, you know, once, once that was put into my brain, I thought, a doctor yeah actually when I thought back about what I'd enjoyed in the years before and I'd I'd recognised that the thing I actually really enjoyed um, was this voluntary scheme that I'd been doing um, called Fun Movement where I helped every week um, autistic children and other children with learning needs I I volunteered to help them learn to swim I volunteered to uh, we just did sort of play groups with them and and I I realised that was the thing that I enjoyed the most out of my whole week was was helping people was being with people and helping them and i thought actually being a doctor i suddenly felt it, it was like my heart i thought yes that's it that would make me happy i could help mm. people but also i think i could do the academics so i think i could do it i really think i could do it I think that's so, so, that's um, so important and something that's come out of, of the episode so far is the value of volunteering and work experience and work placements even in areas that you know you never thought you would ever be interested in actually going to experience a day or two or a week um helping out um is an amazing thing and it really helps guide people on their in their future career but also at the moment it's always very difficult to get out but there are lots and lots of employers who are running virtual work placements uh, ah, virtual work experience. The U- university of sussex are doing a, a medical school one um virtual uh, you can do sort of 3d walk around uh surgery and um doing all sorts of online tasks so there's lots and lots available for our listeners even uh, on this difficult time of lockdown um so you you burnt your, burnt your science books you had that ritual bonfire then you had a, a complete turnabout and you decided under um a seed that was planted by the idea from the family friend and then you you decided then for medicine medical school was it always to be a gp uh, or, or a doctor in general or what was the plan uh, i Having said, you know, I didn't know many doctors, so I didn't really know too much about being a doctor, to be honest. Um, my gut instinct was probably a GP, but I, I thought, oh, I'll wait and see. And, um, yeah, so when you become a junior doctor, you you try, I did paediatrics, I did surgery, I did general medicine, I did elderly medicine, you do all different things. And and I, everything I did, I really loved it at the time. But I thought, do you know what? I love all of these things. Mm. I don't want to say goodbye to any of them. I kind of want to keep up my knowledge of all of them which is what general practice offered me. It was being able to have to know about everything, uh, obstetrics, paediatrics, surgery, medicine. You, you need to know a bit about everything. Yeah. And I really like that. That really is something that I wanted to be able to offer to patients to be able to know a bit about everything. It suits me, yeah. Um, and knowing, getting to know somebody's family and them and um, the holistic and working in a team. There's lots and lots of things that are great about general practice. And you obviously work with um, all different sorts of uh, of uh, employees and practitioners within within the hospital. Um, yeah. And I think sometimes we think of ANHS, we just think of doctors and nurses. But um, who are the other sorts of people that you would come across in your your daily work? So yeah, I actually work very very closely with my receptionists um, mm-hmm. because they. Uh, a lot of the things I'm doing, I have to leave medications with them for patients to collect or I have to liaise with them a lot. So I work with my receptionist. Then we have um, nurses, nurse practitioners. Nurse practitioners can actually prescribe as well. Um, mm. So they can they can see patients and they can give them medication. Um, you've got healthcare assistants. You've got um, 
physician associates there's, there's so many different types of people in the hospital um it's, it's, it's a real team you've got your physiotherapist your operational therapist you've got your um so I call up the district nurse, ask them to go out and see a visit if I need to arrange a visit for a patient at home. There's so many different people um, mm. that all play a part, um, all have a part to play. Well, it's a massive employer, isn't it? Fifth, fifth largest employer in the world. Um, and we're, we're very proud of our of our National Health Service. So um, just moving on a little bit, so you've mentioned that you love about, um, you love the relationships, um, building up that relationships with with, uh, with patients and also being a sort of general practitioner in, in all different sorts of areas. Um, what other things do you love about the job? So, yeah, I have to say, I love being a doctor. I, 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 think, it's, I think it's the best job in the world. <laughs> <laughs> So I love it because it sounds tacky to say this, but I do actually, I really love helping people. It is amazing. It feels like such a privilege to be able to, to have this knowledge and this, these skills mm. that you've been taught that actually you can make a difference in someone's life. You can help them. So I love helping people. It's so rewarding. Um, I really love the challenge that I have every time I speak to somebody, every time I, I have a patient. I love the challenge of gathering all the information together, a bit like a detective, gathering it and then mm. trying to work out and problem solve for them and, and trying to work out how you can help them. I love the fact that you get to meet all different people from all different backgrounds and you find out so much about the way other people live and, and how, um, which sometimes is nice, sometimes is sad, but you, you find out a lot about people's lives. Um, it's so, so interesting. There's always more to learn. Um, so it's very stimulating um, and, and you never get bored. And and that, I never, never, never get bored. It's, a, it's an amazing job. Wonderful. It's, it's it's your sort of passion and energy about it. It's really, you know, really you really communicate that. Um, so, how is it as a as a mother of five? Um, would you would you recommend a career in the NHS as someone who's a working mother, or um, is it you know is, is that a challenge? How, how have you found it since you know since having your children? Yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna lie. Obviously, having five kids and trying to work, <laughs> it's it has its challenges. But the great thing is, is I have been able to continue working, um, which is amazing. Yeah. I've been able to continue offering this, those skills. I haven't had to stop work. I've had an annual appraisal. I've had two validations and I've sort of sailed through. I'm, I'm still a good doctor and I'm still um, able to carry on giving to society, um, even though I, I've got these children. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. It's, it's been incredible. It's been so flexible. So I thought at one stage, I thought, oh, dear. I'm going to have to stop work here, but I'm just going to try and carry on. So that's when I sort of stepped away from the normal general practice and I moved into out of hours. And the out of hours work has provided for me a way of continuing to work. It's flexible. It's worked around my childcare. Yeah. I've then also added on, as the children get older, I can add on to it other. So it's worked perfectly. Um, so the NHS, there is there is so much out there. As a doctor, there's so much you can do flexible around childcare, around family life. Um, it, it's an amazing job. You, you never regret it. You never regret it. I still think I'm, I feel so lucky that I've got this. this yeah. This job, well, this skill that I can do. There'll be a lot of doing. there'll be a lot of um, of our wonderful students listening into this who will be who will be in the process just starting the applications to to medical school and um, those sorts of things. And I know that you're very very clear on your sort of passion and your love of your work. But what are the most challenging things that that prospective applicants should be aware of? What are the challenging aspects of of, of your job? Um, what would you say? I would say that um, you are you you will hear and you will see many many sad things that you'll carry around with you um so you see a lot of sad things and you talk to people and you see people who are suffering they are really suffering they're either suffering mentally physically or socially yeah. and um and you want to help them and sometimes you actually can't help them um and that's that is a weight to carry around um so there's that there's the sadness that you see um there's also this the, there's a very very big responsibility because every patient you see is putting trust in you and you are trying to help them and you're giving them a, a, a solution and a treatment. Yeah. But you're always aware that you are human and we as humans do make mistakes and you know yeah. that if you make a mistake, it, it literally could be life or death. You know, yeah. If you give the wrong amount of medication or if you misdiagnose, if you miss a red flag, which means a miss of something that could say there's something very seriously wrong with somebody, um, you know, there's, there's always that. There's a big responsibility there. So you see sad things, there's a big responsibility. Um, and sometimes, you know, I think doctors in the last few years have felt very overwhelmed with the, um, the amount 
they're being expected to do and the supply that the people that are coming in piling in yeah. um, that they're trying to help and they felt overwhelmed by it but actually i think these last few weeks things have changed a bit because of the reorganization of, of uh, general practice and, and a lot more telephone consultations but there is that there's a lot of it, it, it has felt to a lot of doctors i think sort of overwhelming um in the last few years yeah yeah absolutely what an, what an important um calling what a vocation um okay just as we come towards the end uh of our time together this afternoon what advice would you give any year 12s who are looking to get into medicine uh, anything practical or things they should be doing or thinking about um skills any tips or applications anything at all that you think might be useful um well only, i'm not sure if i'm going to answer your question fully but um I just wanted anyone that's thinking of applying to medical school to really look at their motivation for applying and to just check that because I think I'm not going to lie okay that it is hard and it takes a lot of um, dedication determination to get through all the learning and the exams but if you're in your heart because it is a vocation if your heart is in it you will sail through because you will be motivated because you you want to help people at the end of the day that's your goal if you're doing it if you if you can recognize in yourself now that you might not be doing it for those right reasons um you might be doing it because you feel pressure to do it or your family want you to do it or or you just think it's the right thing to do because you're good at science then it's probably better to try a different career now yeah. and not to just go ahead with it because just be honest and i've had like you know my husband james had this situation and he um started doing medicine and then realized it actually wasn't for him and he's now really happy in a different career um so, so it does happen just do it for the right reason um and then I'd say to those people, if you're like me and you came from you come from a family where there's no doctors and you think, oh man, you know, I'm just not good enough. Um, I, I'm not. I couldn't do it. It's too hard. Um, I would encourage you and say, look, if it's in your heart, if your heart says you might be, this might be what you're meant to be as a mm. doctor, then just put those concerns behind you and go for it. Because this this is a like you said a vocation. It's a vocation, so it's in your heart. And if you've got that academic ability, you will make it. You will do it. And and just keep your. I mean, it's really hard all the exams. But if you just keep that end goal in sight of what you're going to be able to do at the end of all of this, what you're going to have for the rest of your life, you're going to be able to help people for the rest of your life. You're going to have this job for the rest of your life. So it's going to be a few years, which will be hard work. But for the rest of your life, you're going to be a doctor. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. I think that motivation, that end goal, which is just keeps you your head, keeps you be, being able to cope with it all. I, I think that's so helpful, particularly this time in lockdown. Thinking, of examining our motivations and our reasons for doing things, just taking some time out and reflecting on what we're doing and why we're doing it, and I think that will really resonate with our listeners. Um, looking at looking at our hearts and what we really want to do, it's very difficult, isn't it, to, to, to shut off what other people, the pressure we get from outside, and maybe family and friends and expectations. But actually, this is such a demanding career, so you need to really be sure this is what you want to do. Just to check the length of degree, is it five five years still? Is that the case? Yeah, I did five years, yeah. and uh, I believe if you've done a degree before, you can do a shorter, shorter version, maybe four years. Um, but then you have your your training and everything. So how long is it actually until you're like a fully qualified doctor? Um, so usually, I did. Yeah, so five years, then you become a junior. You know, so it's a junior doctor. But then after, uh, then you have to do several years. You decide um, sort of which area you're going to go into, yeah. which will then take several more years. <laughs> Um, so once you've decided you want to be a GP, you then have to do a further three years. Right. Um, two of those years in hospital and one year in a general practice. And then you have to do lots and lots more exams um, and then you become a GP. So, yeah, whatever you decide to do, it does take time. <laughs> but at least by the time you're a junior doctor, you know, you're actually working um, and you're, yeah, that's the fun bit. You get to work. <laughs> <laughs> and what's, what's happening with retirement age, you probably get a good 50 years at work. So it's good to get on the right the right career, the career for you. Um, so the advice you've given so far is about, you know, examining your conscience and, and, and your heart and your motivations. Obviously, you're going to have to have really, really good academic grades. Um, it is a very, very competitive um, field to get into. Um, so, And you've also mentioned volunteering. So having that and that experience is there anything else they need to do or, or or should read or anything else as they prepare for their application for university um uh, oh, 
project. I don't know if I'm the per- person to answer. I don't think I know too much about. Uh, but I mean, I've I helped you, didn't I? With I uh, helped yes. you do some practice. Yes, practice you've been you've been to Bill Sixth Form. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, two of our students who, um, who then got offers. Yeah. I found there was a lot of information online, um, yeah. and uh, and I think they found that really helpful, didn't they? Having that practice. Definitely. So, I think if you can if you can manage to get some practice in uh, for interviews, if you can talk to any people that are currently doing the job, anyone you know of, um, any friends that have family, if you can yeah. speak to a doctor themselves. So I don't know, um, I don't know if you're sure. But I don't think you met Mr. Barnet, but he runs the the MDV, uh, the Medicine, den- Dentistry, and, and Veterinary. Um, program at, at our sick form and yeah it was uh, there's the interviews there's the work experience uh, there's the weekly sort of reading articles and there is a whole lot of preparation that needs to go ahead because it is very very competitive um to get in did you get into your first choice was your first choice queen queen mary uh yeah, yeah. um I, I had a bit of a complication <laughs> did you, you, <laughs> because my school lost my um they my application so i had to take it i had to defer a year <laughs> they didn't send my ucas off um so yeah that was a bit of a problem but <laughs> but i saw it as it was meant to be because then the, when i did actually join there was a new curriculum which would have suited me much better which suited me much better so yeah. um it was all fine in the end it's interesting so, yeah. life never goes exactly to plan or how you think it but i guess it's the you find out some interesting things on the way um uh, definitely yeah and you uh so you d- did take a gap year but you you aren't sure if you'd recommend that <laughs> Now, I took a gap year because I sort of had to. I chose to work and try and save some money up in that gap year um, rather than go on a holi- uh, trip abroad. <laughs> I was going to say holiday. <laughs> trip abroad, travelling. Um, you, you were in, yeah, you, I did some work. You were interviewed as part of getting into Queen Mary, right? You had into face-to-face interviews. Yep. Yeah, I did, yeah. Do you, do you remember those at all? I do. Um, because I now go back to the same room where I had my interview to have my to do some of my teaching um, oh. which is in um, Royal Arts Hospital. Um, so the room and, and the experience, I, I don't think it'll ever leave me because I don't think I really knew what I was, I didn't realise what was going to happen. But <laughs> I walked in and it was me and a, a panel of, I think, seven or eight people. Wow. Must be very intimidating. It was, it was. But, um, but it, obviously it went okay. You just, I was just myself and I was honest. Um, and I think that came across. Well, it's uh, it's fantastic speaking with you. I know that you are someone who's very busy. You're obviously a doctor. Um, you're a chair of governors at a local primary school. Um, you have your five, five children to look after. So it's really great of you to, get to, to give up a bit of your time to talk to us. And it's been really, really insightful and helpful. I've just got a couple of final questions. Um, these are ones I ask all my guests um, at the at the end of each episode, just to see see what you think, really. So if you had not become a doctor, have you got any idea what you might have done? Um, yeah, I think before that, before the doctor idea, I think I was thinking I might be an accountant or something because I was really good at maths. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought, yeah, I'm good at maths, so I'll be an accountant. But you so, yeah, I think. <laughs> yeah, and now you're a doctor. But that was something you were thinking about seriously. Um, did what, what age were you when you decided on you committed to, to medicine? Was that sort of 16, 15? So, yeah, I'd, yeah, it was very tricky actually because I'd already started my A levels. Um, when like when Mervyn gave me this insight, <laughs> yeah. um, so I was doing I think double maths, English and economics. Yeah. Um, and it was about four or five weeks through the term into the term when I decided I wanted to be a doctor. So my 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 school said okay. Well, they talked to all the medical schools, and at the time the medical said the one key thing she really needs is chemistry. So if she can swap one of her A levels for chemistry. Then, uh, then we'll let her. Then she'll, she'll, she's got a good chance of getting in. So I swapped the economics to chemistry um, at that sort of stage. So it was around half, the first half term. My school said I had to try and learn all the chemistry had been done, and if I came back past the test, then they'll let me do chemistry, and I did. So wow. they let me do chemistry. <laughs> so it's about that just always being open, keeping an open mind, isn't it? Things can actually take a left-hand turn or a right-hand turn. You never know quite how things are going to work out. But um, I'm sure your patients are very glad that uh, you ended up dropping dropping that subject and switching to chem. Um, but the last question is, um, obviously, the COVID situation is, is very, very um, tragic, very sad for so many families. And um, 
you know, lots and lots of suffering, and you've seen it on the front lines. But do you think longer term there's any way in which, as a society, um, there can be any benefits at all, any positive changes coming out the back of this this terrible thing we're going through? Um, I do. You know, I've really I've seen some really exciting changes happen. When this all started, I, I was like everyone else, and I was coming, going to work scared. I was coming back from work sometimes in tears. But over the weeks and months, it's been inc- it really has been incredible. The organisation within the hospital, the organisation within local general practice, the way people have changed what they would normally do completely. They've adapted everything, mm. Mm. Um, and they've come together. So doctors are talking to each other much more. There's a lot more teamwork. Um, they're thinking about in- innovativity. They're coming up with new ideas, new ways of doing things. And actually, this t- the new systems in every general practice now is that you people used to say i can't get an appointment with my doctor i can't get now everybody you call up and everybody gets to speak to their doctor on that day and then yeah. the doctor if they need to be seen face to face will either arrange a video consultation or we'll bring them in so it's it's actually working much better now general practice because of this change um and it's brought people together and i think generally everyone that now works for the nhs feels really appreciated because they feel they are loved by the yeah. general public and they feel that they they're just coming to work everyone's got smiles on their faces you can see it where i work it's really changed there's a really good atmosphere in the hospitals in the general practice um there's a there's an energy i think that wasn't there before so i think there's been a lot of positivity do you know it's so um, true that we I, can take, I take just, out of it yeah i just get in the car to go and do some food shopping and uh there's painting, uh, writing on the street, thank you NHS, there's signs up everywhere, and also it's sort of palpable, it's it's on Twitter, it's on the TV, people, perhaps there was a sense we took it a bit for granted uh, before, there's a real sense that people are very, very grateful for everything that that the NHS provides for them, and long may it, long may it continue. Dr Harbour, thank you so much for your time, it's been really, really useful, and um, I'm sure our listeners uh, will get a lot out of that. Um, so thank you so much. Thank you for having me, and yeah, I'll th- take, take care, thank you very much. <laughs> Cheers, I keep thinking, what do I call you, sister? Alex, Dr. Dr. Harborn, um, thanks again. And also thanks to everything that you and your colleagues are doing for us all um, over at the Homerton. So we'll speak to you soon, okay? Thank you. Thank you so much. Take Goodbye. care. Thank you. Thanks for listening, everyone. And um, next week, we've got someone on with a very different um, career. But um, more on that next week. Take care. Goodbye. <laughs>